All right, so I start a three day ready reserve block tomorrow, which means I need to commute into Denver tonight. So let's get my food bag all set up. So what we did is we grilled up some chicken breast on our George Foreman grill, and then I divided them into eight ounce sections and then froze them. So these five servings of chickens are gonna go in the bag. I also air fried sweet potatoes and then I divided those up into five different servings. So those will be able to go in my hot logic in my glass container and I can heat those up for a nice warm meal at the hotel or in the airport, depending on if I get used. I also have some really good sugar-free sauce from G Hughes that goes amazing with this chicken. Then I divided up some baby carrots. These are to snack on on board the aircraft or anywhere I'm at. If I get hungry, I can just pull these out and snack on them. I also did um, same thing with some celery and then I have a few cheese sticks that will go in the bag. And then in my backpack, I have um, like skinny pop popcorn. I have a few protein bars and then I also have um, cheese crackers by Quest. So they're a high protein, um, kind of like cheese it types crackers. So that should last me all three days. All right, guys, let's get this commute started. And here we are again. Ryan is dropping me off at the airport. Good old reserve. I don't miss those days. <laughs> so like I said earlier, I started a three day ready reserve block. I did not get the luxury of self-assigning this time. So if you remember on my last one, I was able to self-assign a trip because A, there were more than enough trips in open time, and B, there was one that started at a specific time that allows Ready Reserve to self-assign. So the first, second, and third of every month is what's called VJA for overlap. So people's trips who start on the 30th and that go into the first of the next month and then have a trip that starts on the first or second that trip has to be pulled so there's a plethora of trips so what they do is they put essentially overtime on those trips if you pick them up out of open time so normally where there's 20 30 trips in open time for me to choose from there's one one whole trip in there which a doesn't start at the time that i need and b means that there's not enough trips in open time to self-assign so i'm at the beck and call of the company this weekend he's gonna be a true reserve flat at some yeah so we were debating whether or not i should get a hotel room tonight but the reserve list came out for tomorrow and I'm number 26, I think. Mm -hmm. So it does make the most sense that I just get a hotel room tonight because it could be not until 11 or noon tomorrow that I'm called, if at all. So essentially we're just playing this all by ear. Sorry, that sun is really bright, but. Yes, and then if he needs a hotel room for tomorrow night, then we'll get him another room. Yeah. We just wanna make sure that he obviously has a place to stay. And we're actually trying to weigh out the options if it's better for him to do a crash pad. Yeah. Um, essentially, it's either a hotel or a house that has bunk beds in it or multiple beds. But I'm on reserve starting on Sundays the rest of the month and every other Sunday there's so many trips already in open time. So that's why we didn't make the decision to go ahead and get a crash pad right now because if this weekend is just an anomaly where I have to get two hotel rooms this weekend and I'm able to self-assign the rest of the month and so be it, then we're not gonna waste the money on a crash pad so we're definitely playing it by ear like ryan said he hasn't done this in years so it's all a learning curve for me and then a learning curve for him as well with me going through it so we're pulling up to the airport now so i'll see you guys in a little bit bye Denver's and now it's time to get off of the aircraft and head to my commuting hotel. 
All right, I just made it into the hotel room. It's actually a really cute hotel. And I met another flight attendant on the hotel van. And she was like, if you don't have the app for the hotel, download it now because you can get your room key on the app and you don't have to deal with the front desk when you get in there to check in, which I'm so glad that she gave me that piece of advice because there was about, <sighs> gosh six other people on that shuttle so we were able just to bypass right past that front desk and i came right up to my room and used my phone to get into my room so that was beautiful that was a great piece of advice thank you so much kathy from united for showing me that feature um so yeah i just got checked in i'm gonna get undressed i'm gonna iron hang everything up and then i'm hopping into bed because i have no idea what time they are going to be calling me tomorrow if at all so anyways um i am probably going to say good night for now and i'll see you guys in the morning or at least kind of let you know what crew scheduling is doing with me good morning it is Technically my first day of ready reserve. It is 9.30 in the morning here in Denver. So when I went to bed last night, I was number 17 on the reserve list for today. And when I woke up, I was number 16. So I moved up one whole spot. So I did not have very high hopes for getting used today. However, within the last like hour and a half, I've moved from number 16 to number seven on the list. So they went through quite a few people this morning so maybe i will get used i'm hoping i do get used because i am a commuter i'd rather work than just sit here and spend money on a hotel because when you are commuting and you are on reserve if you stay in a hotel that cost is all on you the company does not provide that so i would much rather be flying and having my hotels provided for me on my overnight so Fingers crossed that I do get used for a trip today. I also know that I could be used for airport standby, which is not ideal, but it's the name of the game. But I'm kind of hoping I can get picked for a trip, at least a two or three day. Um, so that's where we're at. I'll keep you guys informed. But if I move up on the list one more spot, I'm going to go ahead and shower and start getting everything pre-packed. Um, so I think once I get to like number five on the list, I'm going to go ahead and start making sure everything is packed up. I'll shower. Um, and then kind of slowly start getting dressed. So with the anticipation or with the hopes of getting used. So, but I'll kind of keep you guys informed. All right, quick update. It is currently 1252 here in Denver and about 10 minutes ago, I got a call from crew scheduling and it's a little bit of a double edged sword. So me and Ryan were watching everyone above me on the list today and they were all getting airport standby, five hour shifts of airport standby anywhere from 4 p.m. starts to, you know, 7 p.m. starts going all the way until 11 and midnight. And I was like, well, this is it. I Once I became number one on the standby list, I knew that my turn was next for the lovely airport standby because the person right in front of me got airport standby. I checked her board um, and she got airport standby as well. So I knew my time was coming. But crew scheduling called me and told me they had a three-day trip for me. So I went into my board and I looked at it. It's a three day trip. It's in the A position. So that's the upfront position. It's overnights in Boise and Sacramento. And the kicker is on day two, well, there's two kickers actually. On day two, it is five legs, five legs. I'm doing the California coast up and down. I would go from like, um, I think we could do Boise to San Diego and then like San Diego, San Jose, back down to San Diego and then back up to Sacramento. So I'm all up and down the California coast on day two, five legs with an 11 hour duty day. And the second kicker is it gets back into base on day three after the last flight to Austin leaves. So I think my release time is like 12.30 a.m. and the flight to Austin is at like 5.30 a.m. So I'll just sit and wait in the airport for that flight. Um, first overnight is relatively short. It's a 13 hour overnight. Um, I wish it was a little bit longer just so I could get really good sleep before that 11 hour duty day. However, day number two, after the 11 hour duty day, we do have like a 17 hour overnight. So I'm thankful for that. That way I can get really good sleep because I'm gonna fly that trip on day three. And then, like I said, I'm just gonna sit and chill in the airport and wait for that 5 a.m. flight to Austin. 
I can rest when I get back to Austin. I'm not worried about that, but I'm happy I got a three-day trip. That way I don't have to worry about the hotel situation. Um, now I'm going to be, you know, flying on the company's dime essentially with my overnight. So I don't have to worry about that. So that's great. Um, and I'm ready to rock this A position. So I'm going to get ready in a little bit. I'm taking the 2.30 p.m. shuttle from the hotel to the airport. And my check-in time is 4 p.m. All right, so it's approaching 2.15, so I'm gonna go ahead and get downstairs and get ready to catch the shuttle, and then I'll be at the airport quite early, earlier than I need to be, but the next shuttle wasn't until four, and that's cutting a little bit too close for my comfort. So I'm gonna go ahead and get over to the airport a little bit early, check in, and then make my way over to my gate. All right, it is 12.36 in the morning here in Boise, Idaho, and I just got to my hotel room. It was a great day. Um, I am tired. I got up quite early this morning just because I was so worried about missing a call from a crew scheduling, but um, we had three legs today. We did Denver, Wichita, Kansas, back to Denver, and then Denver up here to Boise. So I have 11 hours and like 55 minutes until I have to be downstairs for lobby again. Um, so it is a short overnight, but it's a beautiful hotel. And the pilots were telling me that I have to make sure I get another Boise overnight with a longer overnight because the hotel is great. It's very walkable. We're right in the middle of downtown Boise. <clears throat> So they were saying to make sure that I get a trip with a longer Boise overnight so that I can enjoy this overnight. So that will definitely be in the future. Tomorrow is gonna be the crazy day. Tomorrow is five legs. We keep the same pilots tomorrow morning, um, well, afternoon technically, um, from Boise to San Jose. Then we switch pilots and then we do San Jose, San Diego, back up to San Jose. Oh, somehow we end up in Sacramento. It's five legs to Sacramento tomorrow. That's all I know. So anyways, I am going to get out of the uniform, get something to eat, talk to Ryan for a bit, and then I am headed to bed because it is going to be, like I said, a very short overnight. So I will check in with you guys when I wake up in the morning. Actually, what I can do is do a little hotel room tour right now so that way everything is nice and fresh. Good afternoon from Boise, Idaho. It was a short overnight, so I know I didn't vlog a lot, but I am up, I am dressed, I am currently FaceTiming with Ryan, and it is about time to go downstairs for lobby. So today is a long day. We have an 11 hour duty day, five legs. We are going Boise to San Jose, San Jose down to San Diego, back to San Jose, back to San Diego, and then San Diego to Sacramento. But we do have a longer overnight tonight in Sacramento, so I will have time to just decompress and just chill, which I'm very much looking forward to. And then after that, it is quasi go home day because by the time we land in Denver, there is not another flight to Austin. However, the first flight of the day is only like five hours from the time we land, so I'll just hang out in the lounge and then catch that first flight to Austin. But we'll talk more about that later. I need to get downstairs to lobby. I'll talk to you guys later. You guys, I am exhausted. So we just got to our hotel here in Sacramento after an almost 12 hour duty day, five legs today up and down the California coast. We are all just beat exhausted, so we are very excited for this little bit longer. I think we have a 16, 16 hour overnight tonight here in Sacramento, so I'm ready to get the uniform off, shower, wash my face, and get into bed. I am so tired. 
But the good thing is, is tomorrow our duty day is only like seven and a half hours. So tomorrow is gonna feel like a cakewalk compared to today, so good. Then I have a little bit of a sit in Denver before I catch that first flight home to Austin on what day is that? Wednesday morning, technically. So uh, I just wanted to come come on and let you know that we survived and it was rough, but we all got through it. We worked really hard as a team and got it done. Quick service. Every flight was about an hour, 10 minutes long. The last one was about an hour, 20. Um, so it was just back to back, nonstop, not a whole lot of downtime. So I'm ready to just fall into this bed right now, but I have to get um, uniform off and showered. I feel like I just need a shower really bad, so I will probably check with you guys in the morning. Good afternoon, everybody. It is the last day of my three-day pairing. So today we go Sacramento to Long Beach, back up to Sacramento, and then over to Denver, and we are done at about midnight tonight. It's technically go home day, but for me it's quasi go home day because I don't actually get to fly back to Austin tonight. I have to wait until the 5 a.m. flight. So I only have about, by the time it's all said and done, probably about four hours to wait until that flight to Austin. And then Ryan will pick me up from the airport at about 8 a.m. It was so nice just to get a really good night's rest. Yesterday was brutal. It was it was hard. Not so much the job was not hard because it was very fast paced. It was just hard on the body. So I was very happy to just crawl into bed and pass out. I washed my face. I unpacked my food bag and got all my charging cords set up. I did not iron. I didn't do any of that last night. I waited for today to do that. I just literally passed out. But today I woke up, drank coffee, talked to Ryan, watched a little bit of TV, and then I went out and explored. There's like a little outdoor mall kind of right behind the hotel. So I ended up going to Insomnia Cookies, as you saw, and got us um, I got a six pack of cookies for me and Ryan to eat on. It's probably not the healthiest thing we need to be doing right now, but while I'm here, I got them. We're gonna eat them. Um, I was gonna go to Panda Express and get lunch because it just sounded really good. The line was so long, it was not moving. So I just decided to come back to the hotel, be good and eat out of my food bag. So I had my chicken and sweet potatoes out of my food bag. Anyways, it is go home day. I'm excited, it is our last three legs. Today is gonna be a cakewalk compared to yesterday. Our duty day yesterday ended up being 11 and a half hours. Today our duty day is seven and a half and not a single flight is full today. So today is going to be cake compared to yesterday. But it is about time, it's almost 3.30. Um, so I need to get downstairs so we can catch the van and head off to the airport. All right, so service on the first level is done. I'm enjoying a cup of coffee. We're making our approach into Long Beach now. We should probably be in final descent in the next five, 10 minutes. Um, and then we will decline, board up, and head right back up to second half. All right, so I have made it back to Denver. It is now 12.35 a.m. I am off the plane. I am just sitting in the terminal. I have not gone to the lounge yet. I haven't really decided what I want to do. I know I'm going to talk to Ryan, and I can't do that in the lounge. I mean, that's just rude to... I know people are trying to sleep, and I'm not going to actually go up there and talk on the phone. So I'm down here in the terminal right now just waiting. So let's see. My flight is at 5.35 in the morning, which means at 4.35 I can check in and get my boarding pass because there's 100 open seats on the plane. So that means I have about four, at, well, right at four hours to wait until then. So after I talk to Ryan, I can probably just turn on some Netflix and just sit here and chill. I'm probably not going to go to sleep. Um, I can take a little nap on the plane and then I plan on going to sleep whenever I get 
to Austin. So um, I think I arrive in at like 8.30 in the morning into Austin. And then, yeah. Overall, it was a really good trip. Like I said, yesterday was brutal. It took a toll on all of us. But we survived. We made it through. Today was great. Our last leg from Sacramento to Denver had 25 people on it. There are airport uh, cleaners in here. So you might hear that in the background. But our last leg had 25 people on it. Everyone pretty much slept. We got service done in a matter of minutes. And then we just kind of checked on them throughout the flight. I sat down, had me a coffee and a snack and played a game on my iPad. So yeah, um, that's it. Now I'm just going to sit here and wait to commute home. So I will see you guys back in Austin. a.m. and I am back in Austin. I am so tired. I did sleep on and off on the plane. Um, they woke me up for final descent um, so I was able to film a little bit out the window but Ryan was here to pick me up. Thank you so much. Now we're gonna go home and sleep. I haven't slept yet. <laughs> he's out. he's keeping my schedule so that way we can sleep at the same time. And I feel, I told him earlier, I said, I feel bad that we're probably going to sleep the whole day away, but we deserve it. Um, oh no, tell them the truth. What? I never thought 20 years into flying that I'd be on reserve again. But <laughs> I am. Because, because of me. this one doesn't wake up. I've been doing really good though lately. Okay, I've but been, I've been, I have to... He's terrified that I'm not going to wake up or not hear a call from scheduling. So he makes sure he's up to make sure that I'm up. But I have been doing really good. Usually I've text him before he even calls me and I tell him good morning so he knows that I'm up. So I'm definitely grateful for that. It's just the safety net that's in place because if you're in the airline industry, you know that on probation, you don't play around. Like it is, you are by the book. But not just that, I'm also his second contact. So yeah. scheduling will call him first, and then if they don't get a hold of him, they'll leave a message and then they'll call on my phone. Yeah. But we are on the freeway right now, headed home to go to sleep. So this is gonna end this vlog here. If you are new here, thank you for stopping by. While you're here, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to ring the bell. So you can be notified every time we put out a new video. If it's not your first time here, welcome back. Thank you guys for sticking around, and we will see you next week. Goodbye and good night.